Hey there, praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for taking time and staying connected with us through these offline sessions. And uh, I want to thank God who enables such platforms. And um, yeah, so far so good that God has been magnificent, gracious, that um, <clears throat> He has not allowed any crazy laws to be passed, like how they took off uh, this TikTok. Yeah, that's much needed, actually. It's such a waste of time. People uploading short videos and... It's, it's <laughs> I okay, I was there too for some time, just seeing what they're doing. But I think 80% it's garbage and maybe 20% little bit of informative and all that. But 80% um, is greater than 20%. So it's good they took off that... <laughs> application uh, but then uh, thank God for YouTube and uh, thank God for many other sites like ultimate tube.com God what is that uh, some some God uh, tube.com something like that and uh, we are we are live uh, um, even there uh, ultimate tube.com you will find some of our videos okay um, let's get into the point um, we have been talking through this series genealogy and evolution of Christianity or genealogy evolution of a Christian born again believer in Christ yeah you all take that pride you know brother I got water baptized in the year of 1995 on that day September 19th afternoon uh, 4 p.m. or afternoon 2 p.m. that cool breeze or maybe the hot breeze in India uh, was just sweeping uh, all over the place and uh, I got immersed on the riverside. Some people even write poetries, which is good. I like poetries too. Um, and I felt the warmth of the breeze is gone. See, anybody immersing in water in that warm weather, obviously they will feel <laughs> nice, okay? Anyway, uh, I was not trying to be sarcastic. And then when I got out, I found that the Holy Spirit caught me, which is good. Maybe there is a wonderful experience this brother had. I had never had any such experiences. I'm very honest with you. I was water baptized at the age of 18, um, where, not age of 19, um, yeah, in a place called as uh, Siruwani, there is a river going on, and wonderful, beautiful place, and uh, you can call it as my own testimony, <laughs> uh, around 2 p.m. is when I got baptized, and uh, September, I think, September 19th or something like that, and uh, yes, when I got water baptized, I felt absolutely normal, I was just the same. But then I had a tremendous belief in my heart. Uh, I found a change. See, since I found that change in me, that I need to quit what I had been doing of the past, quit of the past, um, such as I was a traditional person, Catholic guy, and no Bible knowledge, don't have any desire for the life and ministries and objective and, and goals in life and what am I going to do? Why am I here on earth? Why did God send me? I didn't have any idea about God. But that always piety was there for religion, tradition. Yeah. I had been to a place called this Valankani where we have a big uh, church of Mother Mary. And uh, yeah, almost like 11, 12 times I've gone there. And I've shaved my head many times because that is part of our tradition. Um, and all those things I had been into. But I had no specific objective, the vision. Uh, for God and his people and uh, what is the very reason that God sent me to earth I didn't have any reason so I didn't know the mark of my life I didn't know the mark of my life or, 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 or as, as, as a Christian what is the benchmark or what is the mark what is the destiny what is my vision what I want to do in life maybe I was quite young but then I will tell you what teenage boys and girls listening to me Never ever call you are so young at the age of 18. Sorry, <laughs> you're so young at the age of five or six. These days, six year old kid knows very well what he wants to do or she wants to do. Very smart children, love them. Children, I always love them. Yeah, so don't say that you are you're almost you are an adult already, right? At the age of 18, what you're an adult. So I, I feel shame on myself when I think of that day where. I got water baptized and I knew nothing because of my past, because I wasted a lot of time, right? 18 years is not equal to that one day, correct? No, 
on that day you cannot just get that spirit of wisdom knowledge and power and a holy spirit and tongue speaking and everything this is where people are being fooled in christendom teach them the bible and lead them through the word of god what is the hurry tell me jesus god the holy spirit on the day of water baptism do you know brother yes brother but 30 years before that he was growing in a spirit in wisdom and stature in favor of men and god look to 52 ha uh, what have you done not just now you went through say so that too you know they have one what is that bible study or the by what is that education class for water baptism nice okay church can only do that much we can't blame them what what can the pastor do right he's teaching some of the basic principles such as hey this water baptism is not passport to heaven uh, the way how you are going to live your life after that determines your uh, place in the kingdom of heaven and the water baptism jesus took why because it's like a symbolic representation you being dead to the past and you were born again to the um, uh, uh, you know future and you are you are dead of the sins of the past and you are born again and alive in the spirit and uh and you're taking that oath before god that you will never return back to the sinful deeds and the remission of sins takes place and through the blood of jesus acts 238 and uh, all these things he speaks very nice i love pastors i'm nothing against them i mean good pastors right but there are false teachers who are in the sheep's clothing bunch of wolves hate them that i don't want to name them that's not my business right all right coming back to the point so on the water baptism experience I felt nothing. I just got up and I went, <laughs> got back to the same business because I was a student. What is my primary job? To study my subjects because my parents were pay, paying a lot of money, fees, and I really, really cannot let them down. I was a very responsible son. I was a very responsible student, and I studied. Yeah, I did not rank number one in the district or all that, but with that little brain that I have, yes, I did my best. <clears throat> I gave my best hard work, and God appreciates me, and I and I scored decent enough. Yeah, uh, when I was out of my engineering, I got roughly around 66 percentage. Yeah, I'm only worthy that much. I'm okay. I'm not as brilliant as my wife, who was a distinction holder, and <laughs> I keep telling, uh, and and I've seen some of the say again, no offenses, okay? Some of the distinction holders, IITs, and all those guys are now reporting to me. <laughs> See, Joseph, who was cleaning the toilet, one day he became number two powerful man next to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, "Only my throne belongs to me. Everything take it." You believe in that? Uh, students listening to me don't get any crazy idea study properly only then god will bless i worked hard and god appreciates yeah with a little brain i had but lot of faith god is going to bless me all these things was not there on the day i took water baptism zero started with square zero and you know what god loves people like me and you you are that square zero but i'll tell you the secret many people even after 30 years after water baptism they are in square zero good news to you is God has no problem with that. Only thing you got to go and acknowledge to yourself and to God. Do not feel bad for the time you had wasted, or do not feel shameful to acknowledge, God, I'm nothing. Yeah, I think I'm a demon. Thirty hmm. years after knowing Jesus, if I have not followed His footprints, who am I? I'm a demon, right? You are a rebel. But acknowledge, confess, repent, reconcile. Simple. Yeah, Second Corinthians chapter five, last ten verses. You read, you will understand. reconciliation and repentance paul beautifully describes the steps and i have preached about it in other other sermons body mind spirit and soul spiritual composition how many of you are with me so don't expect any of the supernatural experiences being caught in the spirit or oh, the moment i'm being immersed and i'm <laughs> and i'm brought out of the water i want to be caught up in the spirit like philip and if it doesn't happen i have not received the holy spirit who said that Yeah, these are great supernatural experiences, but that doesn't alone mean that yeah, Holy Spirit works in only that way. Caught in, being caught in the Spirit and being uh, transferred from one place to another place, like our Paul had that experience, Philip had that experience. Yeah, Jesus had that experience, but not vividly explained in the Bible, so I will leave it there. Yeah, once they were about to stone, he went past through them in the midst of them. There are various interpretations to that, so I won't get there. Forget it. Okay, but Jesus went through transfiguration. Yeah, these are all the deeds of the Holy Spirit, the gifts and the anointing, supernatural works of the Holy Spirit. I am a believer in that, strong believer. But that does alone mean that um, you have the Holy Spirit. No, sorry, Holy Spirit works with you. He's right inside of you. You feel it. You hear Him. Yes, you respect that leading. Yes, then you are called as the person who is water baptized. Why am I saying all of this? I keep telling you, we touch upon certain generic. 
subjects before we get into the sermon. But this is not just generic. It's related to the title, the series, Genealogy and Evolution of a Christian. You call yourself as a Christian? I'm touching all the parameters in almost every session, right? This is our 83rd session or 84th. You understand what I mean to say? Understand who you are, brother. Don't blindly go by someone else's doctrines or preachings or teachings or beliefs or tradition or, yeah, your forefather told this. My grandpa, no, he told this. Therefore, my father followed. My father, no, he told me. Therefore, I am following. Why are you supposed to follow your grandpa and great grandpa? Follow the great of the greatest grandpas that is God the Father who sent his only son Jesus listen to his teachings and the Holy Spirit is our teacher who will explain to us in a subtle way that you will accept it look at me I'm a good example what if I were I would have been stubborn enough not accepting the calling of God I told you right in the previous sessions also I studied from Karunia Institute and uh, I entered as a Catholic knew nothing and one brother beautifully did not explain anything from Bible he told one thing you don't need me. You don't need any human being. Buy the Bible from that. Uh, that is office in the Karunia uh, Bethesda. And I went there and I still have that Bible with me. Yeah. I preserved it. The Bible is, what, 27 years, 28 years old. I have kept it very, very safe. And I've read that multiple times. Yeah. I did not frame it and keep it at 10 feet high from the sea level. Sorry. <laughs> I studied it multiple times. I got that Bible, started to read it made my Holy Spirit as my teacher, as my friend, as my helper. And I definitely did a lot of stupid mistakes even after he was teaching me. It was not a problem with my Holy Spirit. It was a problem with me. I was an idiot, spiritual idiot. And my journey, I will uh, just uh, scroll through this playlist, my personal testimony, you will see spiritual testimony. I had been to so many cult churches, got fooled uh, and a lot of prophets, false prophets, got fooled. Uh, God went into dejection, almost to depression. God fooled. Yeah, I mean, I've been there. That's why I'm able to tell this. Otherwise, in, in the presence of God, well, I'm no one to speak any lies. Yes, quite experienced, well-versed with ev everything that I've seen in this, in this Christendom. You want me to talk about other religion? I do not know. I will all never, I've never opened my mouth uh, finger pointing at any of the religion or any of the people who belonging to different culture, language, country, race, color skin. I've never. Why? Because I do not know. I do not know. I have zero knowledge. I have zero experience. Yes, I have zero testimony. But I love them. We welcome them. We welcome them to this doctrine. We welcome them to accept Jesus because Jesus is their elder brother too. He died for them. That's a different thing. Okay. Now you understand, we are talking from the subject of the mark of a Christian from 2 Corinthians 6, chapter 1. I'm stuck with verse number uh, 7, sorry, 8. I'm, I'm dealing with, yeah, I'm dealing with verse number 8, right? We are almost going to close in another couple of sessions, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, this is our part number, what, 11, I think, right? Almost, this is our 11th hour of teaching. Can you believe? This is called as Bible teaching, brother. Yeah, mixed with preaching and um, uh, teaching, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, someone questioned me, are you a preacher or a teacher? <laughs> For the first time, I didn't know what to answer. <laughs> so I said, give me a day's time, I'll come back to you. <laughs> then I went to uh, the Oxford Dictionary and uh, I just referred, you know, and understood the difference. Then I identified myself as a teacher, 80% and a preacher, 20%, because the key difference between a preacher and teacher is a preacher will deliver a sermon from a religious perspective, tradition perspective, and give moral advice, counsel, correct, no, pastor, typical pastor job. I'm not a pastor. You can call me an evangelist. You can call me a, yeah, almost an evangelist or a Bible teacher, right? Now, the teacher basically will help you understand what are the principles, principles that, that, that you could apply to your life and the guidelines and the checklist and the norms, the rules, the regulations, and generally talking, laws and commandments and the instructions given, right? Explaining and helping him to understand. That's a reason. For example, why do you call your college professors as teachers? You don't call them as preachers. Why? They don't deliver a sermon, right? For example, the physics teacher saying that uh, the law of gravity is something like this, you know, 
it always pulls the object down uh, you drop a 10 kg um, uh, or piece of iron from second floor it falls down and you know when it falls down please ensure that nobody is standing down else you know what that piece of iron is going to hurt and crack your skull and you will have to transport them with an ambulance uh, through, through an ambulance to a hospital and surgically when you operate no is almost almost half dead this is called as preaching but the law of gravitation he goes to the board and he explains the formula first of all i am weak in mathematics and physics i am very honest to you i don't remember a single thing what i studied <laughs> i am very interested in subjects like history geography and uh, non detail uh, all these things comprehensions um, and uh, yes I, uh, what are the subjects biology yes i would love to read biology because the way especially Uh, botany and uh, zoology how the way of the way how god creates that was in my heart even while i was a child so sorry then i picked the wrong subject law of gravitation uh, and then he explains the formula clearly i this is how it works and who said that which scientist discovered and how this formula is working left hand side is like this equation on the right hand side is like this therefore it works together he is teacher who is going to explain the principles of that equation right the formula he explains helps you understand how the gravitation works that is the law of nature correct no law of gravity gra law of gravity law of aerodynamics all these are law of nature and he explains you understand the difference preaching and teaching now who am i i am a definitely a bible teacher why because god's calling for me is like that i am here to explain the principles what a christian should be abiding or adopting and therefore his life changes the sister's life changes and they are a blessing to others they walk in wisdom and light and they lead others to light yeah they are such an exemplary role model in conduct in faith in love and pure purity and speech this is the mark of a christian this must be a mark of a must must be the mark of a christian 1 timothy 4:12 and that is why i'm a tremendous believer of um, what my holy spirit taught uh, something i have to teach others and i didn't know that this was in me because now only i remember uh what happens is i keep sharing gospel with my friends colleagues and whatever and one day i remember there was a very close friend of mine i used to stay in paingas and uh, the, the i don't want to refer his name uh, the fellow stayed with me in the opposite room i was in having independent room we used to, it's like when i open the door and he opens the door we can see each other opposite opposite <clears throat> so sometimes what happens is i stand at my doorstep he stands at his doorstep we go together for dinner on a friday evening like that very good friends very gentle people both of us yeah we don't uh, just love this companionship and uh, both of them are bachelors and the kind of we go to for dinner because saturday is a weekend and we have dinner and one day i remember we had dinner and came back home by 9:30 in the night then he asked me some questions on the bible because he is also a keen observer and a learner he was a catholic malayali catholic friend and uh, i started explaining that question i forgot what the question was you know what you won't believe the spirit of god was in me which i did not even realize that he is calling for ministry i was always thinking i should live as a good christian a role model that's it i never knew that i would teach bible we slept at 3:30 am in the night we stood on the doorstep 10:30 11:30 12:30 1:30 2:30 3:30 six hours i stood i made somebody to stand not out of pain or difficulty 6 hours i preached or or i taught him the bible and having no bible in my hand it was all in my heart and the spirit was moving so powerfully in me the holy spirit was bubbling and uh, now now I, i so many incidents i keep on telling you right um, uh, i I, uh, i keep on sharing the word of god when people ask me but now god opened the doors enough enough of coaching classes come on go and spread the be the light to the world go go and spread the message the good news of the bible and that's why we are here all right we had been talking from the topic um mark of the ministry and mark of mark of the ministry means the deeds of your life beloved that's it what is your habitual habitual principle or habitual practices and lifestyle and all that right they were discussing but your lifestyle is put to test when you go through various circumstances in life across the ends of the earth you don't sit at home you don't live in home you don't eat at home and die at home right you all mingle in among the in the midst of the world and worldly people and i will tell you you have you, you if you meet 10 uh, people every day maybe 10 out of them uh, 10 out of 10 are worldly 
enjoying worldly pleasures, heathens, Gentiles, atheists, belonging to different religion, culture, someone rejecting God, uh, or even, you know, maybe one one person you find uh, someone, who, a brother or a sister who is very, very deeply rooted and have that passion for Christ, but very rare to find, correct? Right? How do you handle such people who bring in various experiences in your life and the two things? When they commit mistakes against you, you're able to handle it with a lot of maturity, with kindness, love, and gentle attitude. And at the same time, when they commit mistakes again, sorry, when they commit mistakes against you, forgive them through this uh, spirit, uh, the fruit of the spirit. And at the same time, you also ensure that you don't commit any mistakes against them because the passion of Christ is in you. You have been created in the image of God, and you have never forgotten that. You would never forget that, isn't it? How many of you are with me? And that's exactly what we are teaching here. The fifth principle that Jesus told or spoke. Um, various principles he spoke. But I'm targeting to cover some of the foundational principles based on what Jesus taught. And uh, we had been talking through parameters like by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering. And uh, verse number seven, by the word of truth, by the power of God. And verse number eight, we, are, we just discussed the first half, right? By honor and dishonor, the previous session. And then we spoke about the evil report and the uh, good report, right? When you hear evil report about you or when you hear evil report of, of other brothers gossiping to you, how do you handle such a situation? Are you going to be one among one among the other gossipers or you're going to resist that gossiping thing and, uh, you know, bring in the Christ-like mindset? We spoke about it, right? Or when you hear some uh, good reports um, uh, about you, for example, you don't, get overwhelmed and prejudiced or you don't get carried away you're very you're pretty much focused on who you are and uh, you're always uh, sticking to your focus and vision that god planted in your heart and and uh, we also sp and we are now going to um, talk about very very important things as deceivers yeah and uh, i think today will be the last session we will complete right um, as deceivers or maybe there are a few more parameters. Can you believe as deceivers? How many of how many of you understand the fact that you have you had been living in deception, which means you had been listening to? I delivered a Tamil message yesterday. Um, I didn't target anyone. So anybody listening to me as subscribers or something, I did not target anyone. Sorry, but I keep hearing a lot of people in deception and delivered a Tamil message about the concept of. Uh, the most popular trend is today, should I go to church or not? God allowed pandemic, it's not right to go to church. And that's a reason he allowed pandemic. Therefore, we all sit at home and uh, pray at home and break communion at home. Church, that's it, dismissed. No more church in my life. So I ended up delivering a message. And that's, according to me, it's a, it's a, it's a deceptive teaching. You're in trap, devil's trap. And uh, if you want to know more about it, people who know Tamil, please listen to it, right? But the point here is there are a lot of deception happening in the Christendom, not only today. You read the epistles, you read Peter's gospel, you will understand there were a lot of false prophets. Spirit of Antichrist was dwelling in the midst of them, even during the first age Christianity. Therefore, it is we who should watch and pray, walk in diligence, walk in spirit, walk in wisdom, walk in light. Galatians chapter 5 verses um, 17 to 21 uh, you can read and uh, Ephesians 5 you read it fully full chapter Matthew 26 41 Jesus gave you a warning there and all this we do not know and what happens is you start to believe some of the cult preachers as the ambassadors of Christ representative of Christ a lot of cult churches are there in Bangalore and they're quite popular and one of them is mega church and you know what I was a member there <laughs> I would tell, never tell you the name right <laughs> I have been, I told you, right, I have gone through a rough journey and vast experiences. I've been there. And I was there, sitting there, nodding my hand. Oh, wow, wow, pastor, clapping. The pastor asked me to clap and I clap and whistle, I whistle. And not too long ago, <laughs> not too long ago, after 20, 22 years of reading Bible and having grown in spirit and all that, I ended up in a cult church again. Again means what? I was there again. I was there before also. This is called as deception, brother. Oh my goodness. And for a month or so, I was also thoroughly convinced 
listening to the preaching and teaching of uh, some guys uh, of, of this you know house worship and all that and I, i i came out of it i came out of the deception right now what is this deception is who are getting deceived let's talk about that and then let's talk about deceivers and then you will understand this uh, teaching very clearly right um, very important please pay attention okay because i will tell you what if there are 10 churches eight of the churches at least or seven churches are at least in deception they knew not including the pastor nor neither the believers knew not it's like for example the some of the dreadful disease, uh, disease uh, growing like a cancer in your body you knew not one fine day you discover and uh, find fourth stage or whatever if you're lucky first stage and they eliminate it easily very unfortunate isn't it and like that i have got multiple times gone into this experience uh, because uh, for me everything is like mark of a christian and i don't sit idle i explore for having full of energy and the more i explore the more i fall into deception trust me or not right and uh, what happens here is you get into who get into who get who are the people who will get into the deception tell me the answer is very simple who have not understood the word of god first category second category oh, yeah understood the word of god but not yet grounded and rooted in the word of god what is this grounding and rooting experiences brother you start applying the doctrines in your life to your life instructions do you follow the guidelines the checklist that the holy spirit had given to us and why you know 1 john chapter 2 you read the checklist different categories of christians i have i preached about it in a different sermon yeah um right that uh, these are the people who will fall in deception like half cooked vegetables or they will read one verse only the first half they won't read the second half or they will read something from the middle or lucky verse there are a lot of lucky christians you know what lucky christians morning they'll get up oh holy spirit show me the verse they'll open the bible oh this is the word fine <laughs> it's like a magical book many christians are surviving like this or some people are using this what uh, the word of god as the powerful weapon because bible had said what this is the sword of the spirit therefore they keep the bible right under the pillow or oh, now devil would not come to me <laughs> or they keep the bible in their bag or handbag or small sized bible in their pocket and this and that ah, wherever i go i travel with the bible brother bible is to read and to understand and to apply those principles and to practice that right is not a religion to practice but it is these are the doctrines of life that changes your life how many of you are with me these are the people who will fall into deception or having half understood or somebody misinterprets you don't believe anything blindly you go and ask the holy spirit that something my pastor told but my spirit is somewhat quarreling it is it just it does not seem right holy spirit what do you think tell me from this scripture he spoke like this but i am not able to accept or agree holy spirit will talk to you brother what experience what an experience you know it's wonderful to always listen to the voice of the holy spirit i'm not saying you should decline go so because of one or two experiences what happens immediately you say all these preachers no they are like this who is asking you to stick to that church after identifying that guy is a cult speaker false prophet or a cult church move out of it and the world is big right identify try two three things and finally i ended up in a church and i'm so happy so far so happy yeah been member of a new church for the last one year Uh, you won't believe can you can you believe this i was water baptized 27 years ago roughly uh, and uh, i had to i had taken 26 years to s- settle down in a church you need a more you need a better testimony than this i know that i was an idiot i know that i had gone through a lot of uh, deceptive teachings but the good news no one can deceive me anymore sorry <laughs> i'm not very old but for the experiences i've gone through um, i think i have i'm a very mature christian now i i will definitely not fall in deception okay now what is this as deceivers i have not yet gone into that subject deception as a concept you understood right and who falls into deception you understood that right who will not fall into deception exactly opposite who always consults the holy spirit for example there were there was a uh, town called as berea uh, paul planted a church there and berians when they listen to paul's teaching they will say paul hang on we will go and uh, consult uh, the scriptures and they will run to the synagogue and they will be referring to the scrolls and then they come back to the paul uh, paul the apostle and they would say hey, can continue paul 
you know what kind of people they are what kind of caliber that is amazingly interesting for me i would say this would be the mark of a christian who has been grown grounded rooted and matured in the word of god that they will never go by anyone's doctrine can you imagine the paul the apostle who is the chief pastor or senior pastor of uh, the place berea and uh, they would not believe him and they would say rather paul you wait and we will come back to you and then they consult the synagogue uh, i mean the scrolls in the synagogue and then they will be you know again clarifying with the i'm sure they had doubts and they will be clarifying with paul for sure so those are the people who will never fall into deception always walking in diligence very shrewd people not believing the voice of a man but the voice of the holy spirit i wouldn't say that you should always look at all the preachers doubtfully but then yes you you should verify with the scriptures i keep telling you this right one thessalonians one thessalonians who, who have who don't have bible please write a mail to me right i will gift you a bible one one thessalonians chapter 5 uh, verse number 21 test all things hold fast what is good abstain from every form of evil this is about testing the spirit of anybody's teaching anybody anybody's doctrine especially the preachers and teachers from the word of god you got to consult the word of god the or uh, the holy spirit and only then you will you can stay away from deception how many of you are doing it tell me most of you don't even carry bible then and most of the preachers whoever are talking they will be talking all stories um or their own revelation they won't quote scriptures but in all our sermons you will find that is one unique way of we delivering the message always we speak from the word of god are you with me or not okay so um now we will talk about deceivers now who are these deceivers known uh, that, uh, that is like you know a person deceiving others knowingly a person deceiving others unknowingly what is this knowingly unknowingly knowingly means there are a lot of cult preachers right they want to loot money in the name of tithes offerings threatening people you don't uh you know sell your property and pay this uh, to the church office uh, curse will come and cling on you a lot of people have done that i know my experience is vast i told you knowingly they deceive they want to loot money right and they buy all expensive cars and one of the posh properties and they have australian passport and all that there are a lot of people in bangalore i know a pastor here who has a australian citizenship and another pastor having a us citizenship that guy is not even in india which means all his investments are in are are in us he's a pakka businessman right i know him he's a he's a, he's a proper business guy and uh, anything goes wrong now immediately take the flight and he has all political contacts lot of politicians are invited to his church here only in bangalore northern bangalore <laughs> if i were if i were to you know tell anything more than obviously i'm going to tell you the name and address so i will i will stop there okay what i'm trying to say is knowingly who are they bunch of demons you know demon possessed pastors demon possessed false teachers bunch of unclean spirits living in them do they realize or not i do not know that's a question between them and god yeah yeah people who are demon possessed don't even know that they have a demon in them correct no if they would know then what happens is they would not love to travel with a demon they would make every effort to come out of it and that's a sad truth and that's why i'm telling you the starting point is you fall in deception then you fall into the trap then you travel deep into the trap and he you are going to be used as a mighty instrument by the devil yeah then what happens is you will start preaching those deceptive doctrines which you have heard you got grounded and rooted in this deceptive doctrines you are heart is heart and minds are soaked in this deceptive doctrines and you are going to mislead others imagine if you are the head of the family or head of the church or head of Uh, some organization and all your followers in deception that's how the cult churches mega churches some some of the mega churches are cult churches yeah, in us there are plenty of them i can tell you but i'm not going to name any of them right a lot of lot of cult preachers how you think you examine their life this is how they would have started they would have they would they would be in, involved in this kind of uh, cult doctrines and uh, deceptive doctrines and all that having not understood they have cooked vegetables and 
some of the skills the devil uses maybe they're very good in communication very good in joking pep talks motivational speakers and uh, yeah and even some clever bible teachers very very clever no you cannot tame them somehow they will help uh, find a way to put you to shame or put you down very clever people i have stopped talking to clever people yeah i i stopped talking to people <laughs> i i teach the word of god i would say test my spirit yeah any specific doubts yes ask me if i can i will reply um but i will pray about it before replying a lot of people you know they they just want to fight with me and i am not there to fight because why love of christ is in me and i will never ever fight with anyone this is the decision i took long ago okay fine now you understand how the deceivers originate they don't originate by birth are they deceivers by birth no are they cult speakers and teachers by birth no are they false teachers and prophets by birth no but they fall into the trap because they pay too much of attention to this deceptive doctrines and how can you discern between the truth and the deceptive doctrine is what i told you before you first of all need to be grounded and rooted in the word of god you got to make the one and only person as your teacher the holy spirit yes and you got to always clarify with the word of god <clears throat> it could be a law of co- or commandment it could be a promise it could be a instruction it could be a guideline it could be a checklist it could be even a parable yeah it could be an old covenant standard sometimes it depends for example a subject like day of atonement it starts with the old covenant leviticus 16 then only it boils down to other uh, paraphrases in the new new testament i have done a series on that also almost 40 hours of teaching day of atonement to understand jesus as a living sacrifice on the cross i spoke about that sin offering yes sometimes it all depends it's a comprehensive thing right and the devil did a fantastic job to create lot of deceptive doctrines and led many people into deception and over a period of time those people who were in deception became deceivers unknowingly right but knowingly also people do it and, by, and because they are demon possessed they are instrument but there are very good brothers and sisters in christ some for some time they were into this deception and they became deceivers but since that uh, that attitude is in their heart like always they introspect or once in a while they introspect the holy spirit reveals to them what you did was not right and immediately i've seen them you know re- getting into repentance and reconciling and they come out of deception people who do it unknowingly they have a chance to come back why because their heart is good unknowingly they did they are not worthy of condemnation and the holy spirit in his groaning spirit yeah i mean with a grieving heart he will pray for them and our god the father will never let such people they are innocent before god they are blameless before god unknowingly they did they un- for example me i did not go and you know sign up for a membership in a cult church i didn't even know that guy was a cult speaker it took me few years to discover unknowingly i went and got caught but one, once i knew it i did not even think twice on the same day i resigned from that membership and i said enough is enough <laughs> okay i need to stop here and we are not yet done we have few more topics to discuss okay sorry um uh, we are done with verse number 8 um i would like to stop here verse number 9 and 10 we will continue that this is our uh, part 11 and we are still preaching and teaching this is our 11th hour we are talking about the from the concept of marks of a christian marks of the ministry marks of or or the other or, or what is it the manifestation of a of a christian the deeds of your life as a christian what it should be we are setting certain expectations we are uh, we are injecting or in, injection of some guidelines right and therefore you are well aware of these experiences uh, of these circumstances or happenstances and you're able to discern between the good and bad god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful teaching on deception and uh, this is indeed very helpful and some of my fellow brothers and sisters listening to this message yeah holy spirit please reveal to them all those deceptive doctrines if at all uh if you if at all they are soaked in that for a very long time and bring them to light in jesus name we pray god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist the reason we ask you to subscribe you get automatic notification do not miss on any teaching any video it is only going to help you share it with your friends near ones dear ones relatives family members whoever it may be please share and then leave it there do not keep on nudging them 
Continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers. Please talk to God and pray for me for every day. Every day, 10 seconds, you just close your eyes and pray. Enough. God will hear that prayer and uh, yes. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, do not write to us. <laughs> do not contact me, but contact God the Father in the name of Jesus. And may the Holy Spirit guide you. God bless. Amen.